Welcome to IGSS Online Training. I'm Mike Torrance, Seven Technologies, Denmark. I'm here to present our SCADA system, IGSS. Lesson 16, User Administration. Contents of this lesson. What is user administration? Where do I find it? And how do I use it? Please remember that after this presentation, you're asked to do an exercise. And we strongly recommend, uh, recommend that you do this exercise. What is user administration? The user administration module is the optional security module in IGSS. It consists of three types of security schemes. The first level, user groups, users and passwords. The second level, protect object. This is security for individual objects in the project or configuration. And the third level, exclusive control. This is a string that is configured for permitting specific workstations to control a protected object. In our exercise, we will only do the exercise in relation to the first two levels, user groups and the protect object. This is what user administration looks like in the IGSS menu. It's all the way at the bottom. When you go into Windows and you click on the uh, All Programs button, you come into the IGSS version 7. Group and user administration is located all the way at the bottom here. <clears throat> the user administration module is set up for the IGSS configuration or project which is loaded in the system configuration module. This is also known as the active configuration. We'll start by looking at the first protection scheme, user groups, users and passwords. This is what the menu looks like after you enter the user administration module. <clears throat> the name of the module is here and the name of the configuration is right after the, the name of the user, uh, the name of the uh, module. The first uh, menu item we want to go into is user groups. So after entering the user group menu item, <clears throat> this is the dialog box we're presented with. This is where we create our groups. The procedure is <clears throat> we start by clicking add group and a new group is displayed in the uh, all defined groups box as a question mark followed by four digits. This notation can be overwritten with text by highlighting it and then keying in text in the group name. Default diagrams. Select a startup diagram for each group. This is not a requirement, but it is a feature that you may use if you want your users to be taken to a specific diagram when they uh, enter the IGSS system. Global rights. Select one or more rights for each group. We'll look at that uh, in more detail on the next slide. And then protect object rights. <clears throat> These can be selected for each user group. We'll look at this later on a, a slide that comes in a little bit later in the presentation. Okay, we've created three user groups. <clears throat> the admin group, the op day group, and the op night group. For purposes of simplification, we're only putting one user in each group. The member of the admin group is Bob, the member of the op day group is Jim, and the member of the op night group is Pat. Looking at the admin group first, we want to give <clears throat> that group all of the global rights available. And what are they? They're listed here. Can define, which means that users belonging to this group can go into the definition module and alter the configuration. Can administer. This gives the right 
to a user belonging to the admin group to go into the user administration module and change users and passwords. Can use system commands. This allows users in this group to start and stop the configuration or start and stop data collection and logging. Can use the portal. This allows users in this group to use the IGSS portal, which is an internet application for controlling the process. And finally, can define win pager settings. This allows users in this group to change or alter or create settings in the win pager application. The opt group <coughs> is only given the global right can use system commands, as we see here, and the opt group is not given any global rights at all. Okay, now we go on to the users and passwords menu item in user administration. Step one, we create a new user. <clears throat> uh, step two, we enter the user's details down here. Again, uh, when you originally create a user, uh, the user ID is created with a question mark and four digits. Here we put in the user name, which we want to be able to see. Uh, it comes up in the list here. And we put in a password for our user here. We also re must remember <coughs> down here in user group to connect the newly created user with the group that he's going to be associated with. In this case, we can see that Bob is a member of the uh, user group admin. OK, after we configure all of our users, then we're, in fact, ready to use the security scheme. We do not have to configure the protect object level or the exclusive control level to be able to protect the uh, configuration. One thing more we have to remember to do <clears throat> before we can use the user administration security module is that we have to go into the system configuration module and go to the uh, access control tab and remove the check mark uh, that says disable access control. And remember please to remember <clears throat> the password for a member of the admin group. Otherwise, it will be impossible to come into the user administration module and alter settings. <clears throat>